So in the previous video, I looked at what happens when you connect two half cells together. And I used the copper 2 plus copper and vanadium 2 plus vanadium half cells to illustrate that. In this video, I'm going to look at how the uh, standard electrode potential values for the half cells are actually derived. So where did that plus 0 0.34 volts and the minus 1.20 volts for the copper 2 plus copper and vanadium 2 plus vanadium half cells come from? So as always, the best place to start is to look at the definition for the standard electrode potential. So that is the voltage of a half cell when connected to a standard hydrogen electrode, and that's abbreviated to SHE. So standard conditions obviously apply. So it's 298 Kelvin for the temperature, 100 kilopascals for the pressure, and any solutions need to be at one mole per decimeter cubed. So the next thing we need to do is look at the standard hydrogen electrode. What does it look like? What does it contain? So this diagram here has got everything we need to know about the standard hydrogen electrode. So remember we need two oxidation states for the substance in question. So obviously hydrogen in this case. So we've got plus one for the H plus ions that are in this solution. They're at one mole per decimeter cubed. And obviously the oxidation state of hydrogen in its elemental form is zero. So you can see we've got hydrogen gas being passed into this tube here, and that's at a pressure of 100 kilopascals. So what else can I tell you? Well, we need an electrode. So that's going to be made from platinum because we've already got our two oxidation state for hydrogen. So we need a platinum electrode there. Obviously, there's a wire, and that will go to a voltmeter. And then the other, the half cell that you're measuring the standard electrode potential for is going to be over here. So I'll connect this up in a second. Uh, what else can I mention? Obviously the temperature is 298 Kelvin and there's the um, reduction equation for this half cell. So we've got two H plus ions gaining two electrons uh, to become hydrogen. The important thing is this here. This electrode is assigned an electrode potential value of zero volts. So if you think about it, if you're going to put another electrode here, sorry, another half cell here, the voltage that you'll see on your voltmeter must be just of this substance here. So if we look at the first of the half cells we used in the previous video, so that's the copper, copper 2 plus uh, half cell. Obviously, if you're wanting to measure its standard electrode potential value, you connect it up to the standard hydrogen electrode. And what we saw on that video was that the electrode potential or the standard electrode potential was plus 0.34 volts. So what does that mean? Well, the fact that it's positive means that the Cu2 plus ions have a greater tendency to accept the electrons than the H plus ions in the standard hydrogen electrode. So the electrons in this case are going to flow away from the standard hydrogen electrode and they're going to travel to this copper rod and the um, copper 2 plus ions in the solution are going to accept them and become copper atoms. So there's the overall equation for what's happening there and you can see these red arrows here are just indicating which direction each half cell is moving in. So the voltmeter is obviously reading 0.34 volts, but because the electrons are moving away from the hydrogen electrode to the copper electrode, it's given a positive sign. So all that positive sign means is that this has got a greater tendency to accept electrons than the standard hydrogen electrode. So on the board now, I've got the other half cell that we looked at in the previous video, so the VV2 plus 1. We'll start here with the electrode potential, the standard electrode potential value. You'll see it's negative 1.20 volts. So what the neg the important thing there is the negative sign. So that must be less able to accept electrons than the standard hydrogen electrode. So you'll notice these red arrows have switched round. So the hydrogen one goes forwards now. It's better at accepting the electrons. And the vanadium one has to go in reverse and supply the electrons. So you'll notice that the electron directions changed. 
So the electrons are coming out of the vanadium and to the H plus ions. There's the overall equation for what would happen when you connect those two half cells together. And I didn't mention on the other uh, example, so I'll just quickly address that now. Just a reminder really that the polarity of the electrodes is based on the direction of the electrons. So electrons flow away from the negative electrode and to the positive one. But an easy way to tell which electrodes which is from the um, this relative sizes of the standard electrode potential values. The most positive of the two is the positive electrode. So obviously in this case, it's the standard hydrogen electrode. And then just another reminder, the salt bridge, remember, is to allow a flow of ions between the two beakers uh, to address the charge imbalance that occurs once the electrons start to move. So for the final part of the video, I just thought I'd take a look at other types of half cells that we can um, use. So, so far what we've seen are metal, metal ion half cells, so copper, copper two plus. Whereas this one, this is an example of an ion, ion half cell. So nothing's changed on this side. Obviously, if you were measuring any standard electrode potential, you've got to put it against the standard hydrogen electrode. So that hasn't changed. So if you look at this one here, this is for the iron two plus, iron three plus. So we've got, there's your two oxidation states of iron there. So therefore we can't have a, a third oxidation state of iron. So we've got a platinum electrode just like we've got in the um, standard hydrogen electrode. So you'll notice that they're both at one mole per decimeter cubed in this um, solution here. There's the um, half equation for the cell. Remember they're written as reduction processes. And I'm just gonna tell you straight away that the standard electrode potential for this half cell is plus 0.77 volts. So what does the plus mean? It means that the Fe3 plus has a greater tendency, greater ability to accept an electron than the H plus ion. So the electrons are gonna come round this way. And the final type of half cell we can get is what we call a gas ion half cell. So the gas in question is chlorine and the ion is obviously the chloride ion. So there's your two oxidation states of chlorine there. So minus one and zero. So we can't have a third oxidation state. So we have a platinum electrode again, just as before. There's the um, half equation for the process. Remember, written as reduction. And there's the standard electrode potential for this half cell. So it's plus 1.36 volts. Plus means the chlorine's better at accepting electrons than the H plus. So just as before, the electrons are gonna go away from the standard hydrogen electrode to the chlorine one.